But, That's yeah. a really good distinction. Yeah, I think it's uh, important throughout the entire phase of your project, whether you're a developer, investor, whether you're doing value add deals, it's like, all right, well, what, what are your plan A, B, C, D, E? And, you know, you don't have to exhaust yourself by, you know, fully drafting it out, but being willing to adapt and, and move in different directions, at least having a, a general thought process of what will you do when this happens and not be caught off guard. I know, I, I don't know about you, Alex, but like when I got started, uh, I was caught off guard, man. I was on my heels in different challenging circumstances. Yeah. You know, you get into that as you kind of get more experience, but over time, you don't really want to be in that position. So you're always going to be on your toes. But talk to me a little bit about your strategy. I mean, obviously, you're talking about developing, you know, cabins, as you have described them. Um, but what type of sites do you look for? You mentioned some of the markets uh, briefly, but just give us a sense of what what your overall strategy looks like. Yeah, so right now, we're, we're mainly in Western North Carolina. Um, but we're, we're, we feel like I'm, I'm open to looking at other markets. Um, we, we look at uh, just because I decided to move here, but mountain markets are a little bit cheaper to develop than say if you were trying to be on the beach. Um, they're also less seasonal. Um, so uh, mountain markets, any uh, you can't really go wrong with with developing uh, close like anywhere between thirty to forty five minutes of an entrance to a national forest or a national park. Um, so the the big boy is like the Smoky Mountains. I mean, they just every park saw like a, a record a record in the last year of uh, like visitations and stuff. So. Like yeah, just especially during the pandemic, right? Right. So like we're in the Blue Ridge Mountains, but like Smoky Mountains are about 45 minutes away from us. So, I mean, they saw like 20 million visitors last year. So it's like, wow. Crazy. Even with how popular Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge, Sevierville is right now, it, there's still an appetite for cabins to be developed there. Um, so, yeah, we, especially we, with the big fire, there was a big fire in Gatlinburg, right? right? So there's a, right. a lot of new development uh, potential there, right? Right, right. And, uh, so yeah, so we're focusing on the mountains, and then like I already talked about the the uniqueness of the the pro, the, the cabins. Well, I like to keep them pretty separate. Like we're, we're not developing condos, we're not developing um, like multi unit developments. It's it's well, like in terms of like attached multi unit, um, but like as we're, we're developing the 50, 40 to fifty unit project right, right now, where it, they're they're all detached but they're they're also close and we're sort of like in the niche that the niche 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 that we're in we're sort of in the the boutique resort development is what i look at it as um where there isn't an on-site manager it's the the property is an experience in itself there's hiking trails throughout but at the same time um that they can also visit the different other hiking trails the different attractions that the the, the city sort of provides and sort of talk about uh, go back to what you had said about why did i choose this class and what our strategy is is the short-term rental stuff even during a bad economy or sort of uh, during a downturn the the rates tend to stay the same um if you look at historical averages luxury properties sort of take a little bit of a hit um say like in 2008 and 9 COVID isn't really the best gauge of to just look at what how good short term rentals did because everyone was trapped like not trapped but like they couldn't travel internationally. So obviously prices for cabins and stuff sort of went up and people were comfortable paying that, um, especially with people working from home and um, people were traveling more domestically. Um, and so the strategy, the strategy even before COVID man was to to, we, we felt like people were comfortable. We, uh, we, we invest in drive-in cities where people aren't really, they're used to driving 25, 30, 40 minutes for an attraction um, compared to like getting an Uber or something. And um, I think part of that comes from just, it's, we have a very small airport, like we have four gates. Um, so same thing with the Smoky Mountains, like people are used to driving. So we figured that people would be pretty comfortable driving 50 to 15 to 30 minutes away from the city to be able to have their own cabin where they can have their family in there um, compared to like a hotel room. And sort of COVID sort of re like solidified that too, was people sort of went out from the metro cities um, and sort of stayed in cabins or stayed in houses and then drove into or traveled to the city. Um, so yeah, the, the rates are pretty recession resistant. And I think it's because during a downturn, people are more, they're not going to go spend, like they have less spending money. So they're not going to go out and internationally and go spend money there, but, but they'll take weekend trips. They'll take trips to maybe an hour or two away from them where they can get away compared to spending five to 10,000 internationally. So mm -hmm. that's sort of, that that's sort of our strategy going forward is in, like our thesis is that we're pretty comfortable with 
the both the design of the cabins, but also that strategy of like people, it, it's pretty recession resistant. So 